Good evening, everyone. I was just making sure that everything was working, and I think we've got a video playing here. Welcome. What you just heard was a piece called Preciosa. It is by a Puerto Rican composer named Rafael Hernandez. He wrote it in 1937, and it worked its way right into um, the fabric of Puerto Rican culture and is apparently now known as the one of the unofficial national anthems of Puerto Rico. It celebrates uh, love for and nostalgia for Puerto Rico, but also um, the discontent regarding the incredibly difficult um, economic hardships that the people on this island have suffered for a long time. I am Laura Johnson. I'm so pleased to be here with you tonight, uh, celebrating Puerto Rican culture and raising money to help people who live there. Uh, Hermandad Inc. is a nonprofit advocacy organization providing financial assistance to community organizations that are benefiting the physical and mental health needs of the underserved in Puerto Rico. In the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, the COVID-19 pandemic, and regular earthquakes that continue to traumatize the population, Hermandad continues their mission of providing hard-to-find items, such as, at the moment, homeless hygiene kits and PPE. We are trying to raise money tonight, so please be generous. I want to let you know that there are three ways that you can give. One is right here on Hermandad Inc.'s Facebook page. Uh, you should see a post right up near the top uh, with directions on how to donate. And you can also go to charity.gofundme.com slash Hermandad PR. That's for Hermandad Puerto Rico. And the third way is to go straight to the website, which is www.jkermandadpr.org. We're all going to learn how to spell Ermandad tonight. <laughs> uh, that is a word that means brotherhood or sisterhood. I've also been asked to let you know that all donors, uh, aside from Ermandad Inc.'s board members, will be automatically entered in a drawing there will be four winners. The grand prize, I'm asked to tell you, is a virtual lunch with your artist the evening. That's me. Let's have lunch. Food is provided by the Black Olive Restaurant, and special thanks to Dimitris Spiliadis, who is the owner of the Black Olive. I've eaten there, although it's been years, and the food is fantastic. Three additional names will be drawn to receive a gift from Brands of Puerto Rico and our thanks to an anonymous donor who has made all of that possible. You can give through the weekend and still be entered in the drawing. And I'm also told that um, you can give all through next week to allow time for people to mail in checks if that's what they would like to do. So um, I decided to put together a program of Dance music, uh, when I started reading about Puerto Rican culture, it was clear that dancing is um, just essential to the culture. And so I thought we would start with some Spanish dances, which um, there's definitely a Spanish influence in this, um, in this culture, as well as some African influences. So we're going to begin in Spain with Spanish composer uh, Enrique Granados, who was a Spanish pianist and composer, classical music. He was born in Spain. He was the son of a Spanish army captain who himself was born in Havana, Cuba. Uh, Granados studied piano in Barcelona and in Paris, and his most famous composition was called Goyascas, and it was written in 1911. It was a set of miniatures that were inspired by the painter Goya. There's actually a, a tragic story about Granados that I thought I would share with you because I read it and I was um, really, really moved by it, sort of shocked by it. Um, Goyescas was performed for the first time in New York City in 1916 and it was very well received. And shortly after the performance, um, Granados was invited to perform for the president at the time, President Woodrow Wilson. And because he stayed in the U.S. longer to do that performance, uh, he missed his boat back to Spain. And instead, he took a ship 
to England, where he boarded the passenger ferry, the SS Sussex, which was bound for France. On the way across the English Channel, the SS Sussex was torpedoed by a German U-boat, and um, Granados and his wife went down in that accident, in that attack, rather. Um, I had no idea of this until I was reading about Granados this week to share some, um, some thoughtful details with you. Um, I'm going to play for you two pieces from a set called Danzas Españolas. They are so popular that they have been arranged from a piano piece to a violin and guitar piece, to a two guitar piece, to cello and piano, violin and piano. Um, all kinds of people love this music so much that they transcribe it for their own instrument. Um, I'm going to play two selections. One is um, a slow dance, uh, very graceful, quite sad. And the second one is um, much more upbeat and has real um, imitation of guitar sounds. Um, unmistakable. <laughs> so I um, hope you enjoy these two Spanish dances by Granados.
We move now to another piece that was written in 1937. You'll remember the very first piece I played, the Preciosa um, Unofficial National Anthem, was a piece written in 37. And this piece is as well, only it's written by an Argentinian named Alberto Ginastera. He was born in Buenos Aires to a Catalan father and an Italian mother, studied in Buenos Aires, became a professor, and, uh, and interestingly of note, studied with Aaron Copeland at Tanglewood in the 1940s. So this is from a piece called Danzas Argentinas and uh, Argentinian dances. I will play two from this piece as well. Um, the first one is called Dance of the Old Herdsman. Um, this is, a, uh, this is a, a sophisticated herdsman because he has me playing with my left hand on all the black keys and my right hand on all the white keys, which makes this piece bitonal. Uh, it also, in um, the very final moment of the piece, is a chord which is strummed across the keys, and it is the same notes as the open strings of a guitar. So clearly an intentional reference there, again, to the guitar. The second dance is called uh, Danza de la Mosa Donosa, the Sad Lady, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful um, uh, very reflective and very inward, although it does really expand in the middle section and kind of rend its, rend its heart out. Um, it has a lot of fourths and fifths in the harmonies, and this was a, um, an expansiveness that he and Estera looked for in order to reflect the, um, the vastness of the grasslands, the pampas, in his hometown, uh, home country of Argentina.
In case you're joining me late, I want to let um, newcomers to the program this evening know that this is a fundraiser for the benefit of Puerto Rico on behalf of Hermandad Inc. And uh, the easiest way to give is right here on the Facebook page. And if you give, you can be entered in a drawing and come have lunch with me. <laughs> Let's move to America now, um, but to hear another Argentinian dance, which is a tango. This is a tango written by William Bolcom, who uh, spent his teaching career at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He is a fabulous composer who is still living. I'm very fond of his music, which has a real wonderful way of mixing popular music and jazz and ragtime with a classical tradition in a way that doesn't sound um, phony. It sounds completely integrated and organic. He's wonderful, and he wrote um, a set of pieces called Three Dance Portraits, and I'm going to play the first movement for you, which is called the Dead Moth Tango, and it is um, dedicated to a moth that Mr. Bolcom inadvertently killed. There's a moment in this piece where I play with the flat palm of my hand, and I always wonder, there's just the one moment like that, I always wonder if that's the moment that the moth met his end. <laughs>
We can't have a dance music program without going to Vienna, home of the famous Viennese waltz. We're going to hear now from a composer named Zemlinski, Alexander von Zemlinski, who has a highly diverse family background. Emigrated from Hungary to Austria with his family and has in his family tree Roman Catholics, Muslims, and Sephardic Jews, and he became a Freemason. <laughs> Interesting man. He studied piano from a young age. He attended the Vienna Conservatory, and his life changed in 1893, the day that Johannes Brahms was in the audience when his first symphony in D minor was performed. Brahms loved it and became his champion, introducing him to Brahms's uh, uh, publisher, Simrock, and helping him to make other connections. He is not an incredibly prolific composer, but I am very fond of these dances. They're called Lendler. A Lendler is a, um, a, an Austrian country, sort of like a peasant version of the waltz. Maybe it's like the waltz only for poor people. <laughs> only in Semlinski's hands, I, I have the feeling Semlinski was not poor, and so his Lendler do not sound particularly hard up. Um, they are elegant, they're incredibly inventive in terms of rhythm and the way he takes three beats in a measure and places accents in different places in the measure to make it sound like the time signature has changed. Um, he's kind of always got you on your toes, but they're wonderfully, um, I think they're yummy. <laughs> Thank you. 
our next selection is sort of from Poland and sort of from Paris. So uh, composer Frédéric Chopin was born in Poland but spent almost his entire life in Paris. And he wrote, um, he became very inspired by all the revolutionary activities that were going on in Paris at the time and things that were happening in Poland as well. And he um, started writing these um, polonaises, which were Polish dances. And this one is from the, um, the A major, opus 40, number one. It's very heroic and regal and one of his more uh, well-known polonaises.
program is drawing to a close. It would not be a celebration of Puerto Rico without bringing onto the stage virtually Puerto Rico's most famous celebrity at the moment, who is Lin Manuel Miranda, the composer of the hit Broadway musical Hamilton. You'll have to excuse me because I'm going to sing. I am not a trained singer, but um, this is a fantastic song. Um, of course, you know that Hamilton is a rap musical about the founding fathers. Quite a, an incredible idea to start with. And this is a song in which George, King George, is angry at the colonies for um, causing trouble. And uh, the analogy is made between a relationship going sour and uh, as in a personal relationship between two people. It's very, very smart and quite funny. And um, I hope you enjoy it. In the meantime, please consider donating to this cause. Um, the people in Puerto Rico have suffered so much and they would be so appreciative of your help tonight. not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry in your tea, which you hurl in the sea when you see me go by. Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when you went away. Now you're making me mad. Remember that despite our estrangement,
Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great night.